Once again, it's time to talk about the mecha genre, and this is a series that has been requested a lot on the channel. Since we talked about the Dolbook Command video that if you haven't seen, I leave you a card so you can go see it. And the series that occupies us today is a science fiction series set several years in the future. So without getting involved with intros anymore, today, we are going to talk about the Gorilla Special Group. Gorilla Special Group I hope you really like this video and give it a good like, apparently this series has been quite forgotten, since there is not much information or audiovisual material about it on the internet either. But let's try to refresh the memory a little as far as this already classic anime is concerned. This series was produced and animated in Japan under the original name of Aku Desikusen Strongle and consisted of 53 episodes of 25 minutes long. It was originally broadcast on TV Asashi in Japan from January 21, 1983 to January 27, 1984. Here in Honduras, I don't remember very well what time it was on, but I remember it on Channel 7. The series was broadcast in different countries under different names. In the United States, it was known as Mission Outer Space Strongle. In Italy it was called Captain Gorilla, and in Latin American countries we knew it as Grupo Especial Gorilla, and in some places it was known as Gorilla Force. Special Group Gorilla was produced and animated by the studio Kakusai, Higashi, who were also responsible for Gladiators of Space, among others. The direction was in charge of Kazuya Miyazaki and Kenzo Koizumi, and the soundtrack was the responsibility of Maisuke Yamamoto. The plot of this series is one of its curious aspects because the passage of time and some other circumstances have given way to a confusion around the plot and what the story was about. But I'm going to explain that a little better later in the video, for now let's talk about the history of the series. The story places us many years in the future, more specifically in the 86th year of the 26th century. By that time, humanity has migrated from the Earth to the stars to a system of binary or twin stars, which have given rise to a very special area between the two stars in which there is gravity and oxygen, and in that area, humanity has created a large city called Galactown. But this is not inhabited only by humans, since all the races of the galaxy converge in this area, which has given way to progress, but has also given rise to crime thriving. In fact, most of the crimes are committed by a criminal organization called crime, which literally means crime in Spanish. The most original name for a criminal organization, surely it did not raise any suspicion. And in Latin Spanish, the name of the evil organization was changed, an even less suspicious name if you ask me. The evil organization became so powerful that the Galactown police could not cope with them. That's when Dr. Mandy decided to put together a group of scientists and elite warriors that he called the Gorilla Special Group, who were also equipped with several variable meches called trekkers. But unlike other mecha programs, these did not convert to a humanoid form. Rather, they took a form reminiscent of the Guardian or Gerwalk mode of the Veritek of the Macro Saga. And they also had a super gorilla-like robot ship called the Esrondo, which is the one that serves as their base of operations and means of transport. At first, the Gorilla Task Force is not accepted by the Galactown authorities, so he is put through a difficult test to prove his worth. The test consists of being imprisoned in the Galactown prison, along with all the criminals, and they must escape and then avoid being captured by the Galactown police who have orders to shoot to kill. So it is a life or death test, which the group of six members manages to complete without any casualties. So after this, the guerrilla special group is allowed to begin operating officially.
This is the beginning of the series, which does have a continuity or a thread in its plot, but most of the episodes are about the guerrilla special group disrupting the plans of the evil organization. Unfortunately, the series is no longer available on the internet, so I'm not sure how the story ended. And now let's move on to the main characters. Captain Chance graduated from the Palia Academy and was originally a member of the Galactown Police and was the leader of a special group in the past. Jed is the expert marksman of the group, originally a graduate of the Military Academy. He forms a friendship with Superstar. Superstar, in Spanish the name was changed only to Super, and he is the expert pilot of the group. He appears only in one part of the plot, because he dies and is replaced by Sugar. Sexy, she was renamed in Spanish to Venus. Why? Well, just because. She is the explosives expert, and on many occasions, she ends up naked during the program. But she is not shy about it. Venus appears only in one part of the program since she dies in combat and is replaced by Dolly, who will surely be remembered for this ending. Babyface, in Spanish the name was shortened only to Baby. Despite his large size and intimidating appearance, Baby is a very friendly person and is the mechanical expert of the group. And finally, the magician, he is the oldest member of the team. He is in charge of piloting the Shrangle, and he is also the expert in espionage. His nickname is due to his ability to change shape, no matter the size or body shape of the other person whom he copies. That's why they say that his ability can only be described as if it were magic. As was customary in the 80s, animated series had a toy line, and the guerrilla special group was not going to be left behind. The toy line was in charge of the Japanese Clover, who also sponsored and launched the first Gundam toy lines. But they never became popular with Clover, in fact. They were responsible for ending the season in a hurry due to low sales of their toys, and it would be Bandai that would come to capitalize and make the Gundam figures very popular. But that's a story for another video. The thing is that Clover launched the Gorilla Special Group toy line, releasing models of the Trekkers and the Strungle as well. I have read on the internet some reviews about the toys, and according to them, the problem is that although some were made of metal, they looked quite rough, and were not very accurate in terms of the aesthetic details of the wicks, so they were not very popular either. Although if you look for them today in places like eBay, the truth is that they are not cheap to get. And now let's talk about the Latin dubbing. As always, we are going to mention only the characters that are credited with their respective dubbing actor. This dubbing was carried out at the studio's Procinius Skull in 1983 under the direction of Roberto Carrillo. As you can see in this little painting, Captain Chance received his voice from Roberto Carrillo, Babyface by Eduardo Fonseca, Venus or Sexy by Keta Calderon, Jet by Alfonso Obregón, Superstar by Rolando Castro, Magician by Alan Moreau, Dolly by Socorro de la Campa, and Professor Mandy by Ricardo Lazamo. And for the end, I saved a few curiosities about this Anim series. When the series was created, it was made loosely based on the Mission Impossible series, but do not think that the plot was similar or that there were references to the series. They just said it because as in the series, in the Gorilla Special Group, there was an expert in everything, as we saw earlier in the description of the characters. Maybe it was a strategy to attract more people. Now, do you remember that I told you before that I was going to tell you about a confusion that occurred regarding the plot of this series? Because now I'm going to explain it a little more. If you search the internet for information about the Gorilla Special Group, you will find a completely different plot from the one I told you here. You will find one that says that in the year 2045, an experiment went wrong and launched the pilot David Jans towards the center of the galaxy, which sent him to a parallel universe, where he has to fight with the grip armies led by Max. Star. And that plot summary is completely wrong and at the same time correct. And you may wonder, but how so Eric? Well don't worry, I'll explain more. 
In the 80s, it was a common practice to take two or more Japanese anim series, edit and patch them all together, to launch a new product adapted for the United States market, and that eventually arrived right here in Latin America. Perhaps the case of Robotech and Voltren are some that we can mention as a couple of examples. And that was the same case of an anim series called Go Shogun, which was mixed with images and material of the Gorilla Special Group. Besides, of course, that the plot was redapted to make way for a new series that I'm sure all of you remember having seen at least once. If you know what the series I'm talking about is, I'll give you a couple of seconds to go to the comments and write me what the name of that series was. The final result of that mixture was the series that we all knew as Macron 1, and that plot that I told you about a few moments ago corresponds to this series edited and made by Sabin Entertainment in 1985. The Guerrilla Special Group was broadcast in most Latin American countries between the years 1991 and 1992, then the Fox Kids channel would broadcast it again in the year 1995. According to the information I found, the countries that had the most recent retransmissions were Venezuela where it was broadcast in 2004, and then Chile where they broadcast it again in 2017. But there were only 10 episodes, and they didn't even broadcast them in order. So my friends from Venezuela and Chile, I ask you to tell us in the comments if this information is correct. The truth is that it was somewhat difficult to find information about the Gorilla Special Group because it has been quite forgotten. I hope you liked the video, and if so, fill it with likes and share it, that helps me a lot. If you are not subscribed to the channel I invite you to do so, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to activate the little bell, so that YouTube notifies you when I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out the channel, where there are about 30 videos dedicated to nostalgia, and those series of those years. With nothing more to add for today, I send you a greeting, and until the next video.